We are in the Roadshow Kitchen this morning. Discover Newport. Chef Rizwan Ahmed is here from the Hourglass Mercery. And we're glad to have you here. Thank you for coming in today. Good to see you again. Good to have you here. What are we going to make today? Today uh, we're doing uh, a pollock. So it's a sustainably harvested pollock. Okay. And we're doing a, a terrain of broccoli rob. We've got some feta cheese croquettes, which is basically flour and breadcrumbs. <laughs> and we've got a smoked potato spuma, which is um, it's almost, uh, so spuma is Spanish, uh, is, is uh, foam in Spanish. So it's a nice variety. It's in season. We got some beautiful little Romanesca cauliflower. Oh, they're beautiful. To, to garnish the plate with. Uh, all in season, sustainably harvested seafood. And that's the way the, the hourglass project All right. Is. I got to be honest with you. I've never heard of Pollock before. You haven't? So tell us about the very, fish. Very similar to cod. So it's a good um, substitute or a good alternative to cod or haddock. Mm -hmm. um, also, it's a, cod's been u overused too much. So to us, what we try to do is find something, another, play, another uh, species that's more sustainably harvested. So pollock, and again, it's very similar to, to cod, a little darker in skin, but flaky, and it tastes almost like, uh, like cod. Okay, so and you said it's a sustainable. Explain it's to everybody what that is. Sustainability is basically when, uh, when you're working with your fishmonger, you're going to the grocery store to, to buy seafood, find out uh, where it came from. Mm -hmm. uh, is it, was it caught by, by, um, by trawlers? Was it caught by gill net, hook and line? That's the way we talk about sustainability. Also another thing, when you're catching the fish, does it damage the environment? Is it, are, you, are you ruining the coral, reef, coral reefs? Are you uh, the seaweeds that are on the, on the, on the sea, uh, sea floor? So that to me is sustainability, something that's caught um, in an in a, in a, in a environmentally nice way. And also at the same time, it's not ruin, ruining the habitats that it, that it comes from. And anybody at home who may want to make this tonight, is this fish an easy fish to get today? You, or do we go to, should we go to the market or should you go to the fish market? It's better to go to the fish market to get this right now. It's not as popular as, for, as for, for example, cod or, hal or halibut. So, or so. Many, many supermarkets may not have it. They may this. not have it, but if you go to places like Whole Foods, they, they should have it. Uh, but this is the this is a good alternative. This is the way you, people should be approaching seafood, uh, in in a sense, instead of going for cod, which everybody's familiar with. Sure. When, I, when I mention seafood and fish, the first thing that comes to your mind is, is cod. cod. It won't be pollock. It won't be monkfish. Right. It won't be John Dory. But these are the ones that we're trying to introduce as chefs, so people can have a more of a better understanding of this kind of seafood. And this is yeah. one of the big things on the uh, on the menu at the restaurant. Is, yes, this is one we just started this off a couple of weeks ago, and we actually have it on for the Newport Restaurant Week. Okay. And people, uh, they love it. They're questioning it, but when they try it, they think, "Wow, this is All fantastic." Right. Good so stuff. All right, we are going to get cooking with the chef in just a little bit. In the meantime, back to you. Joins us again. We got a lot to get to. Okay, let's, so let's just start. jump right in, Here's chef. Here's your feta cheese. Do you want to go ahead and just flour these a bit? So we have the bowls. That's the panko breadcrumb. Okay. Egg wash. So we normally go in a sequence. We start off with the flour. Start with so the flour. Toss those in there. And, and what am I? What am I tossing you in? Can the just feta. Toss them in there. Yeah. Okay. That's feta cheese. Give them a nice toss. Great. Then you can toss them right in there. Okay. Give that a little toss. I'm going to season the fish at the same time. And how are you seasoning the fish? No, that's today, it. Chef. Fresh white pepper. Uh, and a little salt, and that's it. Very simple, straightforward. Nice. And a little canola oil in the pan. And when you're s serving your fish, always slide it away from you. Okay, and you're doing skin side down. Skin side down, get it crispy, and I got a little weight here. This is something that it's not too heavy, but what it does, it holds the fish down. Ooh, it's nice and flat, nice and crispy. Little this sizzle. is what you do at home. And at, at work, we obviously use a spatula and we push it down, but if you're home, you have like a small little brick, put that on top, it'll work. Okay, you want to hand those okay. over to me? Here you and go. There's a little cloth out there, you know. Thank you. Yourself up. And then we have the croquettes, which are some of them already done. Mm-hmm. Drop them in. And now with this, this oil, what kind of oil are you uh, using? It's, it's canola oil for here, but obviously at, at the restaurant we have um, a fryer that we use fry oil, which has a higher smoke point. Okay. Um, and I know there are certain oils that you should always avoid when you're doing things like that. What are uh, those oils? Well, oils don't fry, or uh, I mean deep fry in extra virgin olive oil or olive oil. Too expensive, plus the smoke point is too low. Okay. Uh, you want to you you fry something that you can keep the temperature up to like 350. 75 degrees. Okay. So you won't, as you can see, there's no smoke coming off of it, mm -hmm. but it's frying nicely. And always change your oil on a regular, on a regular basis. Wow, and our fish is popping. Can you hear it? <laughs> that's all good. Okay, this will take a few minutes, and if you keep looking at them, they turn a little golden brown. Yep. Once they turn golden brown, then you know they're almost there. Oh wow, a little so, cheesy bites. Those look delicious. Yeah. And our fish, how long does the fish cook? Uh, you cook uh, on, on the skin side. You cook it for about say a minute. Okay. And you check. Wow, it's like fireworks in here. As you see, now you got a nice crispy 
skin on wow. one side, and then the other side, mm -hmm. probably like two minutes. Okay. That's done. So it's about an uh, overall about four or five minutes. This and is it quick. It's yeah. all coming together. We already, you know, kind of finished semi two elements of this dish. But don't worry, because Chef has there plenty more uh, to go. We're going to finish those up a little later in the show. Back to you. Here. And we're uh, cooking up a storm. Oh, we're not going to be splattering stuff, are no, we? That, that's all good. He that for me. I'm used to it. So. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's, uh, let's start plating up. If you want to put a little lemon juice on your pollock. Okay, and remind squeeze. everyone how we, we cooked this, how we prepared it. Basically, all it is is a little salt and, and white, uh, fresh white pepper. Mm -hmm. Okay, I squeezed and about half a lemon on yeah, there because uh, I love lemon juice. Canola <laughs> oil in a pan. And the reason why I like canola oil, there's uh, not a lot of flavor to it. <clears throat> so basically, it, it, the, 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 the fish shines more. Oh, in that's sense. So, so it's not taking away the flavor. The, the flavor of the fish, right. exactly. So gotcha. obviously, and you, you put it down skin side down. Now obviously mm -hmm. at the restaurant, we use a spatula to, to hold the f uh, fresh the fish down in, in the pan so the, the skin stays crispy, but had a little weight. If yeah. you have something like a little weight, just put it on top. It keeps the fish flat, gets a nice crispiness on it, and you're good to go. Nice. Okay. Th this fish, I have to be honest, this fish has a very strong smell when it's cooking. Yeah, uh, it, it, uh, it's slightly oily, um, but it's again, as I said, it's, it's very, when you when you taste it, it tastes exactly like cod. Okay. Um, obviously the skin's a little darker, mm -hmm. but it's exactly like cod. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and I'm gonna start plating it. Sure. Uh, let me just get another napkin. So right now at the, at the bottom of the plate, we have some arugula pudding. Which what is, is arugula pudding? Uh, pudding, basically, the reason why I call it pudding is because it has cream in it. It has a bermanier, which a bermanier is flour and um, and butter. Okay. So obviously, when you have cream, flour, and butter, it's almost like a pudding that you're making. So you're not going to find this on the uh, in the shelf next uh, to no, like, the know, chocolate this, and this, vanilla this, and no, tapioca, no, no, no. right? Okay. <laughs> not at all. But uh, again, it's a very simple recipe. It's it's on the website. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and place. And, and it is have, all about plating. Yeah. Right. And then we have a, a terrine. Now the terrine's made. This is a this is something I made at home. But you can. You, you made can, this at your yeah. house. You're like Bob Vila and the chef all together. <laughs> yeah, but you have a polo wood. Very simple to make. Um, obviously, make a little train, put a little nails in the end, and the train's made in here. So that's your basically your block, broccoli rub and your collard greens lined up, and that's what you get. Now, so what can you is see this the in, the, in the middle here? That's feta cheese too. Feta oh, okay. cheese, yeah. more right. feta. Just to, just to highlight the ingredient. Because as you can see, from from that to this, uh, it reminds that's me cool, of like a sushi roll. Doesn't it? But yeah, and it's more compressed. Yeah, right. It's compressed together. Bind it together. But anyway, and these are warmed up in the oven for a little while. Okay. Okay, so they're a little, little soft. Mm hmm. We go ahead and plate one of those on the side. Wow. And put another one. And what else is inside there? I'm seeing kind of like a, what is it, like uh, a jelly it's, or a sauce? It's actually chili flakes, chili flakes, and garlic. Oh, wow. And that's it. So and it's going to have a kick. Yeah. And then just basically design the plate up a bit. Oh, my goodness. And then the little feta cheese, which we obviously deep fried early on. Right. Yeah. Which didn't splatter. They did not splatter. <laughs> the no, these, clean, clean these were staying safe. And then with. I had some garnishes, and I grow my own herbs in my backyard, mm -hmm. and I oh, grow nasturtium leaves and red vein sorrel, parsley, dill. Mm -hmm. But obviously, for the frost uh, today in the morning, it wilted them a bit. Right. Oh, yeah. But if they were fresh, obviously, then we just garnish the plate with a bit of those, and you're good wow. to go. Wow, it's is like a, a work of art. And this is basically the one of the dishes that we do on the Newport Restaurant Week. Okay, uh, yeah, so tell the, us a little bit about what else you have. So Hold basically on. what it is, it's a three-course meal for $30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is a time to actually, if you've never been to the restaurant, coming in for three, 30 bucks, you can't go wrong. So people normally, we get a, no, a lot of new faces in. Sure. Mm -hmm. And they come in, they try the food, and if they like it, obviously they come back. So for 30 bucks, you can't beat it. Um, first course, we have um, a butternut squash velouté, which is a, a velvety um, a soup, uh, mm. with, and a, then a walled-off salad. Main course is, uh, is this, the pollock. Yep. And then we have duck, and we have a pulled pork risotto. Wow. And then dessert is a chocolate truffle cake Ooh. or a brulee, which people can relate to. Right. So there's some items on the menu that people can relate to. If they don't uh -huh. understand the pollock, then they can go back to the pulled pork risotto or the duck. And the Newport wow. Restaurant Week runs well, from, is, uh, sec the right second, from the 2nd yeah, sec till, till the 11th. Till the 11th, so till next Sunday. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you want to start making reservations now, because we are almost fully booked for the week. Definitely. Oh, okay. so that's great. Uh, I've been eyeing these for a very long time. Do you want to try a cheesy, a cheesy bite? Uh, try yeah, try I do want a cheesy bite. Oh, and I forgot to hang on. Yeah, we need to show this. This is a uh, well, basically, this is potato espuma. <laughs> this is our new favorite toy. Yeah, this we uh, basically it's hay again. Christmas we get, get it from your, from your local farm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you light that up with um, a match, and we have a blowtorch. Light it up, put your a few baked potatoes, scoop the flesh out, put it in there, wrap it up, let that smoke for 20 minutes. Okay, and then you whip it up with cream and egg whites. So, you and have then, a smoked potato gun, yes, and it's, it's called a CS, C, uh, uh, ISI canister, wow. and you add your nitrogen. Do you ever just like it. squirt that and in your mouth like you would have a cream night. can? Think, if there's anything left at the end of the night, we do it. All the chefs <laughs> get involved. And then you just basically... And oh. the taste from these potatoes 
are so good. It has that smoky. It is smoky. The, like the smoke. smoothest mashed yeah. potato you, you have go. ever pictured. And that's the dish right there. So it's a I'm crispy in. skin, sustainably harvested pollock mm -hmm. with a terrine of broccoli rabe, um, fried uh, feta croquettes, smoked potato espima. I just ate my fried feta. Get, I, I, I know um, people are going to say, good. oh, you should try the fish. Why don't you dip it in? This right uh, here? Delicious. Dip it into the smoked potato espima. Dip it in I'm the potato. In <laughs> here we go. Mm -hmm. All go. right. If you want this recipe for all the different elements that Chef brought along, you can head to our website, WPRI.com.